You know, one of my favorite things with fishing is when fishing simple, easy, this is something anybody can do, or shore fishing on Devil's Lake, which I've often felt that you look at all the places where you can catch walleyes and catch walleyes from shore, I think Devil's Lake's probably got some of the best shore fishing on the planet. And every year, you know, you come out here in April, early May, sometimes later, you can catch fish that would put a lot of boat anglers to shame. This is a situation where a lot of times people fishing from shore will catch way more fish than people out in the boats. And so it's a pretty cool opportunity. Got them? Yep. All right, here, I'll grab the net here. Yep. Right here again. Just, oh yeah, hounded Perfect that. eater, aren't huh? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta love it, huh? <laughs> Just crush that mimic minnow too. Yeah. Hear yeah. that all the time, oh, fishing's gotten so expensive. <laughs> I don't know, waders are still less than a couple hundred bucks, aren't they? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't take a lot of equipment yep. or a lot of gear. This is the time and place to do it. Yep. That's a perfect little eater, too. A nice little male. Fry up really nice. Oh, yeah. Through. It's a start. Plenty more where that came from. You know, these shore fishing opportunities obviously they begin you know right at ice out and you know we don't have a closed season in North Dakota and so I mean a lot of times we're, we're fishing for these walleyes at late ice and as soon as we have open water you know from shore we're fishing for them then too and these fish will run up into these areas where there's moving water wherever there's current these fish will run up and, and spawn but what always amazes me is how good these opportunities can be well into the summer you know especially where there's current and rock I mean that'll hold walleyes all summer long at times you know so I think it's cool where people can come out and catch fish without, without a lot of gear and I think it's cool where people can just come out and catch fish without boats you know I think if we can uh, create more opportunities in the Midwest where people can do that I think we're better served as an angling community if you catch a big fish let it go. If it's the only one you've ever caught in your life, you want to mount it, so be it. The law says that you can do that. But, you know, just use some restraint and use some common sense and we can enjoy this fishery for years to come. There he is. Yep. Oh, yeah. Do. There. That's a nice one. <laughs> That's what we're here for and look how he ate it. Oh, come here. <laughs> <laughs> no boat, no problem, huh? <laughs> it was right at your feet too, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. Just perfect. Just a chunk of a walleye. I think that's a female. It's not milking here. We'll let this one go here. Yep. Back into the back into the abyss. Pretty simple program. Effective, something anybody can do. You know, when it comes to catching walleyes from shore on Devil's Lake, there's a lot of things that work. You know, there's times where we can use slip bobbers and, and catch fish from shore. There's times we're just using just a simple slip sink where you've got an egg weight, a swivel, and then a snell and a floating jig with a leech or a minnow. That'll catch walleyes from shore. You can cast crankbaits at times, but if there's one presentation that does it all, if there's one presentation that's caught more walleyes from shore than anything else by far it would have to be a jig and a plastic tail and so i would say you know big part of the springtime you know just jigs and plastics are where it's at i mean you just cast the jig and plastic out and just slowly reel it in or just slide it and drag it across the bottom but you can't go wrong with jigs and plastic so there's a lot of different things that work you just take like a quarter ounce northland slurp jig this is just a shields pro swimmer just your basic four inch paddle tail works really really well the other thing you can do is just buy these Mimic Minnows package. I mean, either a quarter ounce or a three eighths ounce Northland Fishing Tackle Mimic Minnow. This catches a lot of walleyes from shore. I mean, you just buy them. They just come packaged, two in a pack, but I mean, they just, just basically cast and reel. And so a lot of times just using a 10 or an eight pound braided line, maybe a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader, although you wouldn't always have to use a fluorocarbon leader. I just find that it makes it a little bit more pike proof. And a quarter ounce or a three eighths ounce Mimic Minnow, that's gonna catch fish 90% of the time. And so, and the other thing to remember is white and chartreuse, 90% of the time are so, gonna be some of your best colors in this really turbid, stained, dirty water that you find in the spring. Got him right there. Oh, wow, that one went right <laughs> next to the cat. Right next, that's a little better one. Yeah, here, let me get you, give yep. you a hand here. I was, I was 
basically vertical jigging. Uh, I, I was stopping the talk. Oh, I just started uh, oh, yeah, going off right off. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, uh, huh? Yeah, another good fish. Just they good, are. Just good quality. This I think is fun. We do have a male here. Yeah. You see, press a little bit. Oh, yeah. Milking? Just a little bit. Yep. A little milking. That's a perfect eater. That's about a 17, 18 inch fish. Yeah, that's great. Yep. When people think walleyes, that's the size of fish they really oh, are yeah. usually on their minds. Good as it gets, Jaden. Put her in our fancy live well? Yep. First <laughs> class, right there. You know, I bet you over the years, as long as fishing's been around, more fish have been on a, on a piece of rope oh, than in goodness. a live well. Absolutely. I don't think it's even close. It's a pretty sight. Had a lot cooler later spring this year. A lot of lot of wind, a lot of cold winds, but we're finally getting to that point where water's warming up just enough where these fish are pushing up. Males are starting to milk, females are falling right behind, and I think if that water goes up even a couple more degrees, it's really gonna be go time around here. You got one? Yep. Oh, I'm caught on you oh. somehow here. Am I underneath you? I think. Oh, I had one too. I think we're okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, nice one here. Look yep, at that. That's a look, and that thing's gone. Oh, wow. That's... That minnow's gone. That mimic minnow's <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> nice work there. Thank you, sir. I, I thought I was caught on your line, and I had one too. <laughs> Oh Goodness. yeah, that's a nice chunky female. That is a chunky. Yep. That's how you want them to eat it. That's oh, when isn't that so, here? I got flyers. Need yep. flyers? Yeah, I could take one. Here. I mean, Something. when you got them eating it like that, yep. gone. That's when you know you got color, size, and cadence down. Yeah. Here, pop that, pop that mimic yep. man out of here. Had her good. There, there we go. go. Yep. Yeah, that's a female. Nice work there. Yeah. Great fish. Yeah. Gorgeous fish. There she goes. Back to do her deed. So one thing to pay attention to when you are fishing this spawning run, let's say, is that there is there's a true progression to it. And the progression is like a bell curve. First, the first fish to show up are gonna be your males, your smaller males. So if you fish a spot one day, you notice you're catching a lot of those 15 to 19 inch males, milking a little bit. You know you've probably found the right area, but it might be a little early. It could only be a day early. You know, you might come back the next day and you'll see your average jump up. You'll start catching 18 to 20 inch males, maybe a few smaller females. You know you've really hit it when you're whacking really nice females, you know that over 20 inch average the bellies are starting to get soft. That's when you know those females are getting ready to drop their eggs. The males will be right there, lay their fertilizer. That's at the peak. That's the peak of that bell curve. You start to see a downward trend, that, trend then, just missed one. You'll, be, you'll start catching spawned out females, bigger fish with very thin bellies, and you'll start catching a lot more males once again. So how you can look at it is the, the males show up first, Followed by the females, you hit that peak where they're in the same area at the same time, then the females drop their eggs and leave, you know, catch males again. Yep, there we go. Right here. Right, right here. at the right at the yep. right. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Gotta love it, huh? <laughs> Right off the thing. That fish was Vert like three feet off the end of your rod tip. <laughs> Vertical jigging without a boat. <laughs> You're going to love it. Oh, You're that seeing, is cool. I, I, this bite's only getting better and better. I mean, we're you know, definitely seeing You can catch fish out here into June. I mean, that's the thing is you can catch fish out here from shore. Nice male. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we're 
after fishing here the day before too, I've, this is a different class of fish we're seeing today. I mean, our average size has definitely gone up, but that's another good one. That one will come home with us. And we're gonna keep fishing, see if we can get any more. Oh, that's a gorgeous sight. I love a full stringer. You know, probably the big thing right at ice out, you know, is just the water clarity in the sense that you know, this water's moving, it's muddy, it's high, you know, and so this year we've had a cold spring, we've had a lot of rain, we've had a lot of snow. You know, it's early May and these, and a lot of these fish haven't spawned yet. It's just been a really late winter. You know, we, we just haven't had a spring yet. And we've had a lot of rain lately. I mean, this past week we had two inches of rain. And so even like last week, you know, the water clarity, I mean, you could only see your jig maybe an inch, two inches under the surface of the water before it disappeared, you know. And when you have that type of visibility, that type of turbidity in the water, these fish are really hard to catch, you know. Then as this week has progressed, the water's settled a little bit to where you can see down four, five, six inches, but that's all it takes. Here's a good one. There we go. Oh, love it when they crack that, huh? <laughs> How's it feel, Jason? Well, it feels like a nice one. Oh, yeah. Another chunk. <laughs> All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. Isn't that special? Yeah, can't get enough. I mean, you come out here with, all, with kids, you can come out here. If you're just new to angling, you look at all the equipment, all the gear, and boy, fishing can be pretty intimidating. I don't have all that equipment. Don't worry, you can come out here and just catch some beautiful walleyes. I mean, that's just gorgeous. What an awesome opportunity. Just unbelievable how good this can be. You know, people have been asking all winter, you know, how's the fishing gonna be on Devil's Lake this spring? Everybody anticipated it was gonna be good because we had some moisture. You know, we had some snow this winter. And you see this current coming through, this current drives us. Years where we get some high water and some current coming in, these fish run up in these tributaries and in these, in these channels of spawn and it's just an unbelievable fishing opportunity.